And I can see everybody's muted and everybody's cameras off. So thank you, really appreciate that. So just to um, kick off, we thought we'd just run a couple of polls to gauge um, where people are and what they know about flooding and conservation authorities. So I'm just going to set the first one um, running. So this question is really about where you're joining us um, from today. So I'm just going to launch the poll now and then you should be able to respond. So I'm going to give that a few seconds. So just probably counting down next five seconds or so, and then I'll end the poll. Okay. And I'm just going to share those results now. Okay. Great. So good spread across the jurisdiction and other as well, which is great. Okay, thank you for that one. Stop sharing those. Okay, and then we just want to ask you a few questions. So this one is around uh, conservation authorities. So what do you think conservation authorities are responsible for? Um, so I'm just going to launch that now. Okay, just give it a couple more seconds. Okay, so I'm just get, I'm going to end that poll now and I'm going to share those results with you all. Okay, so Irina, would you like to provide the answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's very good. <laughs> So we are responsible for monitoring and providing the forecast. So the um, majority of you are correct. So that's great. Okay. So we're just going to go to the next question. So this question is around agencies. Um, so I just wanted to know what you think around, you know, which agency operates the dams on the large Quadra lakes. So I'm just going to launch that poll now. Just give it a few more seconds. Okay, I'm just ending that poll now. And I'm going to share the results with you all. Okay. Okay. So Irina might chip, chip in here. The correct answer um, to this question is Trent Seven Waterways. So Parks Canada. Thank you for that. Okay. And then the last question we're going to be asking is around information on flood hazards and where you would look for that information. So I'm just going to launch that now. So it's a bit of a longer question. Okay, we're getting closer. Give it a couple more seconds. Okay, I'm just going to end the poll now. 
and share those results. Okay, it's all good. Okay, Irina, did you want to comment on that question? Bob FM will have the information as well. Uh, they usually we send our information to all media outlets and they usually run it as well. But you have to listen to Bob FM. <laughs> That's great, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but it's very good. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna stop um, doing the polls now. So thank you very much for participating that. We really appreciate that's really helpful, engaging where people's understanding is. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Irina and she will take you through the presentation. So over to you, Irina. Thank you, Emma. So my name is Irina Shularenko. Again, I am hydrologist. I do flood forecasting and warning. Uh, I'm leading the program for conserva uh, conservation and I all, I do the uh, other water um, related stuff such as groundwater, low water, precipitation measurements, but my main focus is on flood forecasting and warning program. So I did record my today's presentation just in case uh, of any technical difficulties. Uh, however, I am here. You can uh, put your questions in the chat box and I will uh, answer your questions at the end of this presentation. So I am sharing my screen now. And here is my presentation. Okay, now I will make sure we have sound. Yep. Okay, and here we go. If you have any problems, please um, let us know in a chat, um, chat box and we'll try to fix it, especially with sound. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for attending the Floods Happen. Be aware and prepare, lunch and learn. Today's presentation is jam-packed with information on flood preparedness and flood emergencies that I hope you will find useful. I will start with a very brief description of the Corsa Conservation Watershed. The black line on this map outlines the Corsa Conservation Jurisdiction. It is based on the natural boundaries of the Balsam, Cameron, Sturgeon and Pigeon Lakes and Lake Skugok subwatersheds. As a result, it covers parts of the six municipalities City of Kwarza Lakes, Township of Skugok, Township of Brock and Municipality of Clarington, Township of Kwanmanagan and Municipality of Trent Lakes. Since earliest time, people have lived along the edges of rivers and lakes. Rivers have always been a source of drinking water, a food source, transportation route and supplied power to the mills. Later, close to our time. Living at water has provided and continue providing nicer views and better recreational opportunities. However, living too close to water puts us in danger, as all rivers flood. It is important to remember that floods are natural phenomena that cannot be eliminated completely. A flood happens when channel does not accommodate the amount of water that flows in, in it. So there is no other way for river but to spill out of its banks and into the floodplain. Floods are part of the river life cycle and floodplain is the area which it uses periodically to stretch and spread out. Floods are the most common and costliest natural disasters in Canada. About 40% of floods occurs in April and May, and it includes Kwarza Conservation Watershed. The majority of flooding that happens within our area is a result of spring melt and rain that comes at the same time. There is often a misconception that flooding only occurs at a certain time of the year, but this is not true. Flooding can happen in any season all year round. 
Spring in our region traditionally is a high-risk time of the year for flooding, as I mentioned, when warmer temperature melts the snow on the ground and spring showers can cause a significant increase in inflow that enters river systems and exceed their capacity. In the summertime, thunderstorms sometimes bring us very brief but yet very intense local downpours, causing flash flooding. In the fall season, we sometimes see large weather systems or even remnants of tropical storms or hurricanes that are packed with moisture, rainfall and instability moving through southern Ontario. Even during the winter months, flooding can be caused by ice jams or rain on snow events during warm-ups. So how we deal with floods? Emergency management in Ontario works as a system of partnerships and begins at the individual level, moving through the community or municipality to the province and then to the federal government. At the emergency escalates, higher levels of government are involved. Individuals and families are expected to be self-sufficient and be able to take care of themselves for the first 72 hours of the emergency. Later in this presentation, there will be helpful tips on how to achieve this. When individuals cannot cope with the situation or emergency is really serious and lingers for longer, Municipalities will step in and help their residents. Municipalities have the primary responsibility for the welfare of the residents and protection of property. They have the authority to respond to not only flooding and flood emergencies, but all types of emergencies. To provide an official, efficient response to any emergencies, including flooding, Municipalities develop emergency management programs that are tailored to local needs. They plan emergency response in advance and develop partnership with citizens' organizations and private organizations. Municipalities will declare a flood emergency if it is required, and they will request provincial assistance if it is required. In in many cases, response capacity of the municipality will be sufficient to deal with the local emergencies. Conservation authorities, including Corsa Conservation, support local municipalities in flood management by providing a flood forecasting and warning services. Conservation authorities also provide related flood expertise and technical advice. We consider this as the one of the most important services that Quarza Conservation provides to its member municipalities. To fulfill this role, we monitor watershed and watershed conditions and assess the flood potential on the daily basis. We communicate the flood risk to municipalities and public members when it is required. We encourage and support municipal flood emergency planning. Province of Ontario is represented by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry in the flood emergency management. Province operate the province-wide flood warning system it's a surface water monitoring center out of uh, Peterborough. Province assists municipalities with flood response when situation is beyond the local ability to cope and municipalities requested support. And where conservation authorities do not exist in areas such as uh, uh, north from Kowarsa Conservation Watershed within the Gull and Burn River subwatershed, Province provides flood forecasting services to member municipalities through the Ministry of Natural Resources district offices. Lastly, 
The role of the federal government includes providing assistance to the provincial governments when requested and may take the lead during emergencies that clearly impact on the federal jurisdiction. So, as I have mentioned, individuals and families are expected to support themselves for 72 hours. I do want to believe that situation will improve faster or health will come before that 72 hours um, threshold. But we have to be prepared for that period, 72 hours. By taking a few simple steps, you can become better prepared to face a range of emergencies. Being prepared includes knowing the risks. Knowing the risks and hazards can help you and your loved ones prepare for unexpected. Take some time. Learn and discuss with your family potential hazards around your a home around your neighborhood, your region. If you live close to the river or lake, especially if you're new to this area, learn about historically high levels, when and why they have happened. The other action you should take, make an emergency plan. An emergency household emergency plan will help you cope with the stress Make sure to keep your emergency preparedness kit up to date. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll go back one slide. And check it at least once a year. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, we'll have to listen to it again. But we missed uh, quite a lot of this slide. Which, uh, sorry. Make sure to keep your... Make... Uh, Taking care. Okay. Sorry about this. So, as I have mentioned, individuals and families are expected to support themselves for 72 hours. I do want to believe that situation will improve faster or health will come before that 72 hours um, threshold. But we have to be prepared for that period, 72 hours. By taking a few simple steps, you can become better prepared to face a range of emergencies. Being prepared includes knowing the risks. Knowing the risks and hazards can help you and your loved ones prepare for unexpected. Take some time. Learn and discuss with your family potential hazards around your home, around your neighborhood, your region. If you live close to the river or lake, especially if you're new to this area, learn about historically high levels, when and why they have happened. The other action you should take Make an emergency plan. An emergency household emergency plan will help you cope with the stress of an emergency or disaster. If your house or property is subject to flooding, plan, plan your escape route. Make arrangements where you go during the time your house is unavailable. Include an emergency contact list in your emergency plan and consider that your family may not be together, may not be with you when a disaster uh, happens. So discuss with your family members what would you do in this situation. The general recommendation is to pick a contact out of town that all your family members uh, that are not with you at this moment will reach out in case of an emergency. An out of town contact it just because in this case, it is less likely that that contact will be affected by the same event. Every Canadian household is strongly encouraged to develop an emergency plan. Um, you can go and Google uh, for information and even some templates for the plan and just fill it up. 
and another step. Build an emergency kit. The kit includes items that you may need during an emergency. Start with essentials. Some food, some water, flashlights, copy of your important papers, some cash, medication, some hand sanitizer, a knife, can opener, charger for your phone. That's actually very important items item to have. Remember some special things such as your kids' items, baby food, diapers, your prescription medication, medical supplies if needed. Do not forget about your pets. If you're taking your pet, if you're planning to take your pet, pack some uh, pet food and any other items specific to your family needs. If you directed to evacuate, consider the following items. Clothes, shoes, sleeping bags or blankets, toiletries, personal items, and even like you have to bring activities for children, such as playing cards, travel games, to make, to make them busy during this stressful time. Oh, wow. So, as I have mentioned, individuals and families are expected to make sure to keep your emergency preparedness kit up to date and check it at least once a year. Another very important aspect of being prepared is being informed. Kawartha Conservation communicates a flood forecast and flood hazard through the flood messages. There are three types of flood messages issued by us. The first type is watershed condition statement. There is a water safety watershed condition statement and watershed condition statement flood outlook. Two different uh, types. So the watershed condition statement, water safety, indicates a lowest level of flood risk. It is a general notice that potential conditions exist that can pose a risk to your personal safety. The watershed condition statement flood outlook is an early notice of the potential for flooding based on the weather forecast that may call for heavy rain, snow melt, high wind or other conditions they could lead to high runoff, cause ice jams, lakeshore flooding or erosion. When uh, the flood risk escalates, we issue the flood watch. The flood watch notifies that uh, the potential for flooding exists. And lastly, flood warning is a notice that flooding is imminent or occurring. Flood messages are posted on the Kowarsa Conservation website and social media. You can also subscribe to receive flood messages by email. I strongly encourage you to do that. The flood messages are also available on the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Forestry website and on the website of your local municipalities and through the uh, social medias of your local municipalities. Please make sure to be subscribed to those um, services and use them often. Taking care of your house and your property, making it flood proof is another step in being prepared. Uh, here is some uh, easy action that you can do around your house. Extend downspurts away from your home. Remove debris that could present danger during the flood event. Secure outdoor items, including piers, docks, boat houses, furnitures, barbecues. Maintain water drainage systems such as weeping tile, culverts, ditches. Learn about the sandbags assistance available from your municipality. Inside your home. Store any personal belongings in sealed bins. Move items of value out of the basement if you know that flood may happen. 
test some pumps regularly and consider installing a backup power system for some pumps. Put weather protection sealant around basement windows and ground level doors. During flooding, it is important to act both fast and safe. Move to the safer area very quickly. Move to the higher grounds. If you're stuck in your house, move to the, uh, the highest floor of your home. Avoid areas subject to sudden flooding, uh, like low spots, ditches, area close to water courses. Never let kids play outside in high water, storm sewers, uh, drains, ditches. That's very dangerous. Do not travel or move at night. If you must do so, be very careful at night because it's harder to see the flood danger. If you're told to evacuate, do it immediately. Avoid already flooded areas. If a flooding stream or water is above your ankles, stop, turn around and go the other way. Just six inches of flowing water can knock you off your feet. If you must walk, Look for still water and use a stick to check the ground in front of you. Do not attempt to drive through a flooded road. The depth of water is not obvious and the road may be washed away. A foot of water will flood many vehicles. If your car stalls, leave it and seek the higher ground. Rapidly rising water may engulf the car, pick it up and sweep it away. Two feet of rushing water will carry away most vehicles, including SUVs and pickups. I really want to emphasize the danger of driving through the flooded area. As they say, a picture worth a thousand words. Well, here we see a series of pictures. This happened very close to home in Toronto on August 19, 2005, as a result of heavy rainstorms. It has all happened in a matter of a few hours, cost hundreds of millions of dollars to fix, and Finch Avenue was closed for months. So you can see why I say no driving through the flooding areas. When flooding is over, check with local authorities if you can return to your house. If unfortunately your house was flooded, Many steps are to be taken before it is safe for you and your family to get back into your home. As floodwaters may be contaminated and contain risks to your health, including raw sewage and chemical contaminants, please remember using personal protection equipment while cleaning your house. Floors and walls are first to get dirty and damaged. It is recommended stripping off carpet or linoleum from the floors, drying and disinfecting subfloors, removing the wet dry walls. Do not use flooded electrical equipment such as outlets and switch boxes or fuse breaker panels until they have been inspected and passed by the electrical utilities or an electrician approved by the utilities. Do not use flooded furnaces or uh, water heaters until they have been expected and serviced by a trained person. Uh, flood and sewage water contain harmful uh, microorganisms that can grow on surfaces inside of your heating and uh, ventilation systems, even in ducting that was not submerged in water. There will be lots of household items to be discarded, unfortunately. Your municipality will help you with that. Discard all food that has come into contact with flood waters. Contact your local health unit on advice with regards to drinking water and your well. Remember that flood water can be contaminated with stuff like sewage and chemicals, as I said. 
You may be eligible for provincial assistance through the programs such as Disaster Recovery Assistance for Ontarians. This program helps individuals, small owner-operated businesses, farms and not-for-profit organizations um, to cover emergency expenses and repair or replace essential property following a natural disaster. It does not apply to cost covered by insurance. And again, your local municipality will be able to help you with that. And with that, I would like to conclude this presentation since I already taken more than I uh, was allowed to, more than 15 minutes. I can call this presentation a teaser to the next week event. So on March 18, next uh, Thursday, we will have the Flood Preparedness and Safety Public Seminar. That is going to be a larger event with more presenters. There will be four presenters, including myself, and the uh, Transurban Waterway, and the City of Quarsa Lakes, and also intact uh, Institute for Climate Adaptation will present at that event. And we will have a panel with N questions and answers. So everybody is very welcome to that presentation, to that public event. It's going to be very interesting. And again, thank you very much, everybody, for attending and uh, looking forward to talk to you all soon. Thank you and bye for now. Thanks, Irina. That was a great, great presentation. Lots of really useful information there. Um, I was going to ask you at the end, you know, if people wanted more information or more detail on any of the uh, points covered where they could go, but the event is a fantastic way for people to find out more. Um, so just in terms of, you know, we've had some questions in the past, particularly around water levels on lakes. So, you know, where would people go if they wanted to find out more information on their lake water levels, for example? Uh, uh, if you want information right away, the easy way is just call, call us <laughs> and I will provide information with regards to this this morning, like today's morning. Information on lakes can be found at the Trans Severn Waterway website if you want to look at by uh, by themselves. So it's um, Trans Severn Waterway Water Management and you can find lakes level. Uh, there are a few locations uh, within our watershed that um, have a gauge station on streams and local creeks. That information can be found on uh, the um, Environment Canada um, Environment Canada Water Ag Agency website. However, our our website monitoring page is the hub for all of these links and all um, information that will uh, send you somewhere else. So start with us. Call me if if I cannot answer the question or I cannot um, answer the phone. Go to our web page, and there will be a useful link and uh, yeah useful information to the uh, water levels. Thanks, Irina. So just another question that we often get asked, um, and I thought it was worth touching on, is sandbags. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think you've touched on it in your presentation as well, but, you know, if people are in a situation where they're needing sandbags or wanting some kind of protection from their property, um, where would they first uh, need to go? And just, if we could just reiterate that point, that would be great. Thank you. Municipality is responsible for uh, sandbagging assistance, let's say. It is promoted by municipalities that property owners are really responsible for safety of their own uh, properties. However, City of Corsa Lakes 
uh, they uh, have a stockpile of municipalities throughout their jurisdiction. And um, in majority of cases, it's just available send backs and send, so help yourself. Uh, however, they are able to provide some assistance to seniors, to those real in need. Um, City of Corsa Lakes just released the media release on the uh, locations, um, uh, sandbags supplies, sandbags and sand supplies yesterday. So if you go to their website, City of Corsa Lakes website, there will be detailed information where and how you can find your sandbags. For other municipalities, I haven't seen that information uh, readily available for public, but if you contact them, I am sure they will um, direct you somewhere. That's great. Thanks, Irina. So um, I'm not seeing any more questions at this point. Um, if you do have any questions after the presentation, feel free to send us an email and we'll try and respond or give us a call. Um, we're always happy to answer any questions. Um, but Irina, is there any final points you'd like to make before we uh, finish for the day? Yes, my apology for the hiccups. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> I tried to do something and it like it screwed the presentation. So I just stayed away from my mouth. <laughs> like, I mean, yes, and thank you very much, everybody who attended this. Please spread the word that uh, uh, the next Thursday event is available it will have lots of uh it will be extended version of my presentation we will have uh presenters well on roles and responsibilities that's going to be me we will have somebody from trans waterway that uh will um tell us about uh, uh water level on the large coastal lakes that is very interesting topic always and we will have uh, municipal representatives, city of Corsa Lakes, with regards to sandbags availabilities and social assistance if needed. And uh, um, uh, the person uh, from the Intact Center for Climate Adaptation will help us with explaining how to make our lives, our uh, um, the properties, our houses uh, flood proof. That's yeah, that's going to be an interesting event and it's different time of the day. So if somebody not available at the lunchtime, evening time may work better for them. That's great. Thanks, Irina. OK, well, thank you all very much for joining us um, for this Lunch and Learn. As we will be doing more series of these throughout the year, as we mentioned at the beginning. So please check out our events page on our website and see if there's anything else that you're interested in joining us for. Um, we really look forward to seeing you all again. And this uh, presentation will be, is recorded and will, will be made available as well. Um, so if you wanted to watch it again or pick up any other points, um, you'd be able to do that. So I'm going to stop the recording now um, and just once again, thanks everybody for joining us.